Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're gonna be talking about orphan branches and why you might wanna use them as well as the syntax for setting them up. Anyway, let's uh, jump into it and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so we are going to clone a git repo today. Doesn't really matter what it is, so we'll use AST pretty. Seems to be the one we always use for these videos, but that's fine. Uh, and the way AST pretty is set up is there is a main branch. And right now I don't have any feature branches around, but you can imagine there might be other feature branches. Now, sometimes you may want to restart your history from scratch. This is a pretty rare thing to need to do, uh, but I can think of kind of two use cases for this. One being that uh, you, actually maybe three use cases. One being that you want a documentation or a website branch. For instance, think like GitHub pages. You want to host a web page uh, from a Git repo. So you might want to make a GH pages branch that's based basically a new branch from the beginning of time. Uh, another might be if you're doing a full rewrite of your repository. For instance, you know a, a large major version that doesn't retain any of the previous history. Uh, and kind of the third reason is similar to the second one. You want to purge the history due to some other reason. Like maybe you want to get rid of the history from when it was a private repository when you're making a public repo or something like that. Those might be reasons that you want to restart the history of a branch. And the way you can do that is by using dash dash orphan when creating a branch. Uh, now the command that I know for doing this is git checkout dash dash orphan and then you name the branch. Uh, so let's say that we're making a GH pages branch from this. So we'll do, we'll do git checkout dash dash orphan GH pages. And what this will do is it'll make a new branch. And if we do get log on this branch, it'll actually tell us that there's no commits. We are starting this from scratch. It's actually very similar to if you had done, you know, just initialized a git repo and then did git log. It'll say, you know, there's no, no commits on your current branch. Uh, well, it's cut off, but it says the same thing as it says over here. Uh, so basically we have started a new history from scratch. Now note that when you do this, uh, and I haven't figured out the right way to do this, there's probably a better way to do this that doesn't have this pitfall. Uh, but right off the bat, if you do get status, it's actually gonna list every, every file that was in the previous branch as a newly added file. Uh, now, if you're starting your history over from scratch, you probably don't want the code that's there. So you're probably gonna wanna get rid of this. And so you're gonna do two more commands to get to that. You know, brand new clean state there. You're gonna do git reset dot, that is going to unstage everything. Uh, and then you can clean your repository, something like this. And now git status is clean, and then we have no files here. And so then you could you know, create your docs or whatever else you need to do here. Um, so let's say that we did that. We're actually gonna do git commit allow empty, empty initial commit. Again, a best practice I've talked about in a previous video. Oh man, <laughs> I have pre commit set up, so we're going to skip that because there's no config on this branch. Um, and let's say, I don't know, I made a readme or something like this. Um, GH pages. Sure. Uh, we're going to do this again. And readme. Now, note that this branch now has history. And this history is entirely different from the history of the main branch. As you can see, this has a whole bunch of commits on it. One line wc shell. You can see we have 216 commits on main. Now, the neat thing about this orphan branch is Git will try pretty hard to prevent you from merging this into your original history because they have different roots and Git's like, what are you doing? Don't do that. <laughs> It doesn't know how to merge them, so it, it will complain about them. And this is a almost guaranteed way to trigger a merge conflict. Uh, but if I'm on uh, this orphan branch and I try and merge in main, for instance, uh, you'll see that Git is going to give us a helpful message that it refuses to merge unrelated histories. Now there is a merge, I think it's merge unrelated histories, which you can kind of force it into that. Uh, no, that is not, it is allow unrelated histories. Allow unrelated histories, which will let you merge the two sets of commits together. And then you kind of have like, it's no longer a tree of commits. You now kind of have like two different roots. It gets really confusing. I wouldn't recommend this setting ever, but I wanted to let you know. I wanted you to, uh, wanted to let you know that it is there. Um, you'll see that, yeah, it's, it's almost always gonna cause a merge conflict for any of the files that exist in both of those branches. So we're gonna actually support this and not uh, do that. Anyway, that's orphan branches. I recently had to do this to make a main branch when I was dealing with dead snakes and I wanted just like a little documentation branch unrelated to the actual packaging branches that were used for 
publishing theirs. Uh, anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.